<clears throat> okay, rule 24. We're getting, getting into towing and pushing. A power-driven vessel when towing a stern shall exhibit, instead of the lights prescribed in either rule 23A1 or 23A2, two masthead lights in a vertical line. When the length of the tow, measuring from the stern of the towing vessel to the after end of the tow, exceeds 200 meters, three such lights in a vertical line. Side lights, a stern light, a towing light in a vertical line above the stern light, and when the length of the tow exceeds 200 meters, a diamond shape work can best be seen. And this, <clears throat> this rule goes for a while. <clears throat> 24B. When a pushing vessel and a vessel being pushed ahead are rigidly connected in a composite unit, they shall be regarded as a power-driven vessel and exhibit the lights prescribed in Rule 23. Rule 24 continued. A power-driven vessel when pushing ahead or towing alongside, except as required by paragraphs B and 1 of this rule, shall exhibit. Instead of the lights prescribed, either in Rule 23A1 or 23A2, two masthead lights in a vertical line, side lights, and two towing lights in a vertical line. And page 59 says, A power-driven vessel to which paragraphs A or C of this rule apply shall also comply with Rule 23A1 and 23A2. And this picture has an exception. You see it halfway down the page, smaller print says, Power driven vessel towing astern, length of tow 200 meters or less. When masthead lights for towing or pushing are exhibited aft to forward masthead lights required. Same for international. Paragraph E says a vessel or object other than those referred to in paragraphs G in paragraph G of this rule being towed shall exhibit side lights astern line. When the length of the tow exceeds 200 meters, a diamond shape where it can best be seen. 24 continued, goes on to say, provided that any number of vessels being towed alongside or pushed in a group shall be lighted as one vessel, except as provided in paragraph 3. A vessel being pushed ahead, not being part of a composite unit, shall exhibit at the forward end side lights and a special flashing light. A vessel being towed alongside shall exhibit a stern light and at the forward end side lights and a special flashing light. And when vessels are towed alongside on both sides of the towing vessel, a stern light shall be exhibited on the stern of the outboard vessel on each side of the towing vessel, and a single set of side lights as far forward and as far outboard as practicable, and a single special flashing light. And the next page has a picture of all of these next to each other. This is what we drew out earlier. Oh, okay. That had the biggest shape. So the special flashing light is always on the bow. Mm -hmm. of the inland push ahead or alongside. Yeah. And it goes on for four more pages. <laughs> it says, An inconspicuous, partly submerged vessel or object being towed shall exhibit. If it's less than 25 meters in breadth, one all-around white light at or near each end. If it's 25 meters or more in breadth, four all-round white lights to mark its length and breadth. If it exceeds 100 meters in length, additional all-round white lights between the lights prescribed in subparagraphs A and 2, or subparagraphs 1 and 2, so that the distance between the lights shall not exceed 100 meters, provided that any vessel or object being towed alongside each other shall be lighted as one vessel or object, a diamond shape at or near the aftermost extremity of the last vessel or object towed. And the towing vessel may direct a searchlight in the direction of the tow to indicate its presence to an approaching vessel. Page 67 goes on to say, where from any sufficient cause it's impracticable for a vessel or object being towed to exhibit the lights prescribed in paragraph E or G of this rule, all possible measures shall be taken to light the vessel or object towed, or at least to indicate the presence of the unlighted vessel or object. Page 69 continues. Notwithstanding paragraph C, on the western rivers, except below the Huey P. Long Bridge on the Mississippi River, and on waters specified by the Secretary, a power-driven vessel when pushing ahead or towing alongside, except as paragraph B applies, shall exhibit side lights and two towing lights in a vertical line. 
So they put this exception in there as just a small exception, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it happens to take place from the Great Lakes all the way to Baton Rouge. Right. <laughs> That's a big exception. Now, pushing for international... Okay, here it is. Yeah, no yellow lights when you're pushing right. ahead or alongside international. Now, the barge would have the running lights in front, too? Yeah. Okay. But no stern light. Right. Mm -hmm. So even if you're pushing a vessel, that vessel you're pushing or that barge you're pushing is a vessel being towed. Okay. Vessel being towed, side lights and a stern light. Unless it's being pushed ahead, then just side lights. That's right. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, we're coming up to the last part, page 71. Where from any sufficient cause it is impracticable for a vessel not normally engaged in towing operations to display the lights prescribed by paragraph AC or one of this rule, such vessels shall not be required to exhibit those lights when engaged in towing another vessel in distress or otherwise in need of assistance. All possible measures shall be taken to indicate the nature of the relationship between the towing vessel and the vessel being assisted. The searchlight, authorized by Rule 36, may be used to illuminate the tow. So, let's look at this again. Towing, towing and pushing. A power-driven vessel towing astern. Looks like my back started erasing it before I got to it. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Power driven vessel towing astern. A tug. Let's go through the whole thing. Remember the uh, two in a row, mm -hmm. three in a row, and four in a row. Two in a row, tug and tow. So the tug had, is less than 50 meters. meters. Good. And how long was the tow? Less than uh, 100 meters. Less than 200. 200. So this two in a row refers to masthead lights. Two in a row. Three in a row. What was three in a row? Uh, tow greater than 200 meters. Right. A tug and a tow greater than 200 meters. So what does that mean for day shape? Diamond shape where it can best be seen. Okay. Diamond shape on the toe. Yes. And so three in a row. A tug and a long toe. The tug less than 50 meters. And a toe that exceeds 200 meters, which, mean, which means we need three mass headlights and a diamond shape. Hence three in a row. Three mass headlights in a row. Four in a row, the big one. Long tug. Long toe. So our tug is over how many meters? Over 50 meters. Greater than 50 meters. And our toe from the after end of the tug to the after end of the toe exceeds how many meters? 200 meters. Over 200. What kind of day shape do we need? Diamond. Diamond where it can best be seen. Four in a row. Three masthead lights in a row forward in the vessel. Mm -hmm. And a fourth mass of light, a bathtub and higher than the forward three. So when she comes at you, she's going to be big and she is going to have three mass of lights forward, second mass of light, a bathtub and forward, a bathtub and higher than the forward three. And she is going to look like she has four in a row. Okay. 
So two in a row, a tug and a toe, three in a row, tug and a long toe, four in a row, long tug, long toe. Now there'll be side lights also. <clears throat> Good. All of these and guys will get side lights. So red port, green starboard. Red port, green starboard. Red port wine, green starboard. Same with on the vessel being towed. Red and green, red and green. Red and green. They will get stern lights, right? The vessel being towed gets a stern light. Okay. Now, the tug has two stern lights, right? A yellow and a white. Yellow yes. higher than the white. Yep. Yellow over white. Very good. Yellow over white, towing astern at night. Yellow over white, towing astern at night. Yellow over white, towing astern at night. Okay. And the two and three lights are on one mast. And then if it's a four in a row, the fourth light is on a separate mass higher and abaft the forward. Very good. Two or three lights. Good. Okay. This is towing astern. This is what the test is on. Okay. Because this is where international and inland are the same. Now let's look at pushing ahead and towing alongside. And this is illustrated on page 62 and 63 of your Rules of the Road book. This is a very good illustration of this. Because this is, <clears throat> this is where the lights are the most different internationally and inland. So, <clears throat> Pushing ahead or towing alongside? Pushing ahead or towing alongside? So, inland. We have pushing ahead Right? <clears throat> so we get the normal lights, side lights, red and green side lights, red and green side lights. Two in a row for a tug and a toe. And for, for towing alongside, similar. Right? Red, green, side lights. Red, green, side lights. In this case, our, we get a white stern light. And we get two in a row for a tug and a toe. Okay, what other lights do we get? Yeah, flashing yellow. Special flashing. Oh, special flashing. Inland only. And then what about in the stern of our towing vessel, our tug? We have the stern light. Something about a pushing fellow. Pushing fellow. Yellow over yellow. Oh. I'm a pushing fellow, inland. Yellow over yellow. I'm a pushing fellow. And then international. International pushing ahead or towing alongside. International pushing ahead. We get our side lights, red and green, red and green. And then we get two in a row 
for a tug and a tow and a white steering light. And that's all she wrote. No yellows. Alongside international. Red and green. Red and green. Stern light. Stern light. Two in a row for a tug and a tow. This is pushing ahead or towing alongside international and inland. Now page 62 and 63 is where it's portrayed in the book. Okay. So the important thing is to remember inland has the yellow stern lights and the special flashing yellow mm -hmm. And I hate to be that nitpicky, but yellow towing lights. These are towing lights. Oh, there's a special angle? They have the same characteristics as a stern light. 135 degrees from okay. right aft to 67.5 degrees on either side. But because they're yellow, they're called a towing light. They're called a towing okay. light. It's really easy to get confused. Stern light and towing light and masthead light and towing light. People think the two in a row, two masthead lights in a row, they think those are towing lights. They indicate because they're on the same mast, one above the other, they indicate a vessel towing, either pushing head alongside or towing astern. Two in a row is a tug and a tow. These are mast headlights. Okay. And towing lights, yellow over yellow, I'm a pushing fellow. These are your towing lights. And when we tow astern, yellow over white, towing astern at night. Yellow over white. Oh, yes. Okay, the next part of Rule 24 for towing vessels says, says this. When a pushing vessel and a vessel being pushed ahead are originally connected in a composite unit, they shall be regarded as a power-driven vessel and shall exhibit the lights prescribed in Rule 23 for a power-driven vessel. So if you're pushing ahead and you are originally connected in a composite unit, you are regarded as a power-driven vessel, and then you have to act like one. Right? So if you are pushing ahead in a composite unit, you need side lights, and a stern light and a masthead light. And if you're over 50 meters, a second masthead light, a bathtub, and higher than the forward ones. There's a tricky question in there about power driven vessels, and it says. <clears throat> A towing vessel rigidly connected in a composite unit shall be lighted shall be lighted as and then you get A, B, or C. And the answer is a power driven vessel not towing. Oh. Yeah. Because you're lighted as a power driven vessel. Okay. And these are minimum requirements. There's a vessel that comes into Traverse City that's a composite unit that has yellow over yellow in the stern and red, white, red, and it looks like a city. Right? This is the very minimum. Okay, we went over <clears throat> pushing ahead. A vessel being towed. Let's look at just exclusively at a vessel being towed. Okay, here is our vessel being towed. 
how do we like this vessel being towed? I'm going to have uh, side lights and a white stern light. Good. That's all she wrote. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> this one. I'm sure it happens. It seems kind of ludicrous. It says when tug has toes on either side and it's in the middle of the two. Then it has a single, it has a set of stern lights and a single set. So it has a stern light here, has a stern light here, and it's got a single set of side lights and a special flashing light when it's in them. Now you have a mast head with two in a row. You know, I don't think you do. Let's let's look at the quick reference. It gives the best visual on it. This is such a great picture. There's a oh, lot of it? rules in the road going That's on. a great book, by the way. The one minute guide to rules in the road. That's what the power squadron uses. Ah. Is it Charlie Wayne? Yep. Charlie Wayne really put out some quality information. Let that be known. Here we have, here we have the mutant double-sided tower. And it doesn't show mast headlights. Really? Huh. Right here. Single set of stern lights, sing, or stern light on the outboard of each vessel. Okay. Being towed. And then a single set of side okay. lights. And a special flasher. Huh. And it seems like we'd have a stack of four on the same mast, doesn't it? Or a yeah. stack of at least three at or least, something. Yeah. But that's not that's not how they said it. I hope none of us get in this situation. I, I don't want so to be too. there. <laughs> <laughs> Put two million pound barges on either side of you and just head down the river. Good. And again, for all these rules, page for these towing rules, this is page 62 and 63 really shows the pushing ahead and towing alongside. The differences between international and inland are portrayed very mm -hmm. well there. And then it goes over inconspicuous or partly submerged vessels or objects being towed. Right, and we looked at these. We said partly submerged or inconspicuous object, less than 25 meters in breadth. Remember how it was lighted? All around at the stern. So at both ends. Oh, both ends? Yep. The dragon that's portrayed in the book mm -hmm. just has an all around white light at the stern in a diamond shape. Okay, so that's the. Exception then. Right. Dragon. That's the international. Oh, okay. There's no dragons in inland waters. What is it? I dragon? think it's like a huge bladder bag. Really? Like a big bladder filled with fresh water or filled with diesel. Something that floats. Oh. Probably wouldn't want to fill with rocks. <laughs> <laughs> so, all around white and the bow and stern, and then. If it's more than 25 millimeters, you have one in each corner. Good. And I used to see it as one in each corner too, but one of my students opened my eyes and it says, you mark the length and you mark the breadth. Oh. And so this is over 25 meters wide, <clears throat> but less than 100 meters long. <clears throat> so if we are over 25 meters wide and more than 100 meters long, we mark the length and we mark the breadth, but we cannot be over 100 meters between our length lights. So we have greater than 25 meters and greater than 100 meters 
and then you put a diamond shape on it where you can best be seen. And then one more part of the rule says, provided that if it's multiple objects, it's all strapped together and towed and stored as one object. These are partly submerged, submerged, or in conspicuous. Oh, yes. Someday I'm going to make a whiteboard that has spell check. <laughs> That'd be nice. The Google board. Okay. <clears throat> There. For some reason, people really remember these. As soon as I start drawing them, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. One here, one there, one there, one there. Mm -hmm. And it just, these pictures end up standing out in people's minds usually the first time I draw them. And you only need the diamond on the greater than 100 meter length. Yeah. Okay. It says, the towing vessel may direct a searchlight in the direction of the tow to indicate in its, its presence to an approaching vessel. If you have a big searchlight on your vessel and you're towing something partly submerged or inconspicuous, even if it does have lights on it, the relationship between that vessel and your vessel may not be clear. Yeah. And if you shine a light on the hawser and on that, the vessel being towed, the relationship is more defined. And it says, here's another exception, where from any sufficient cause it is impracticable for a vessel or object towed to exhibit the lights prescribed in paragraph E or G of this rule, all possible measures shall be taken to light the vessel or object towed, or at least to indicate the presence of the unlighted vessel or object. So again, put a light on it, something, put a strobe on it, something. Put a searchlight on it is probably your best option. So make it obvious. Make it obvious. And then we come to the exception. Notwithstanding paragraph C, on western rivers except below the Huey P. Long Bridge on the Mississippi River and water specified by the secretary, a power-driven vessel when pushing ahead or towing alongside shall exhibit side lights, two towing lights, and a vertical line. So that's your western rivers mm -hmm. pusher in between the Great Lakes and the Huey P. Long, which is the whole country. And then it goes on to say, you may assist people even if you don't have these towing lights. <clears throat> it says, we're from any sufficient cause that is impracticable for a vessel not normally engaged in towing operations to display the lights prescribed by paragraphs A, C, or 1 of this rule, such vessel shall not be required to exhibit those lights when engaged in towing another vessel in distress or otherwise in need of assistance. All possible measures shall be taken to indicate the nature of the relationship between the towing vessel and the vessel being assisted. The searchlight authorized by Rule 36 may be used to illuminate the tow. Good. Okay. So we went over it once, all words. We went over it again, words plus the illustrations. Mm -hmm. Right? We probably have to do it again. <laughs> yeah, and we will do it again. Good. It's, it's, it comes down to repetition. I know. And so we won't necessarily read through the whole book, but every time that I figure out what rule it is, I'll probably go back, read the rule, so it comes out verbatim. Good. Because that's what you see when you read the questions. It makes... A couple times, I misspoke myself in the wrong... Wrong time. And it just, like, stuck in everyone's head. <laughs> and it, it took a long time to reverse that. So wow. try to catch it quick.